Um, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Max Brown, and John Jackson joins us now for our weekly football roundtable. So, uh, JJL, I'll start with you, and then the guys can can chime in. What did you see in the game against Colorado that you think uh, might stick, you know, that could be a sign of, of good things to come, and, and what might maybe had something to do with Colorado's futility in certain areas? Um, well, I think that, you know, over, I mean, they they won. I mean, that, and that, sure that's did. that's a that's a that's a big thing. <laughs> it, it changes the mindset, you know. You know, it, a lot of the, everybody knows football is a lot of it's mental, and a lot of it is confidence and belief in your teammates and camaraderie. And so, going on the road and getting a win and be able to come back and outplay in the Coliseum, where where most of the people will be cheering for you, is a big deal. So I, I'm looking forward to them coming in with some momentum and you know see if they can. If Dante can get them, I, I think Dante will have them on a high going into the game. Yeah. And if they can k- start with that high, get get the halftime ahead, and finish the game, you know, fi- you know, finish the game as he talked about. I thought, I mean, to me, offensively, I thought it was important that they got that run game going. And I think the way they got it going, it was, you know, it, pa- good. it was passing the ball to open up the run. And I think that's kind of more of what this team is going to be like. I don't think it's going to be a team that kind of lines it up and tries to mash you off the ball and tries to, you know, burn power. And they're never, they're never going to be that kind of team. But I think what they can do is kind of open up that running lanes. Because I think you saw what Colorado had to do. Like, oh, shoot, we got these guys and this guy. And we had to start – dropping off and that's why you saw the open running lanes for Keontae. The defense had to think about that back end and that's what I think this offense can kind of take moving forward. I'm right with you and schematically I walked away super impressed because yes you're right, pass to open up the run but I also saw some wrinkles in the run game we hadn't seen before. To get a little high level X's and O's, they were doing some different pull schemes guard that we hadn't center, seen. Yeah. yeah, the guard center which that is such a basic tag but they went to it, they had success and then they double and triple down on that and so I like that and then also Drake alluded to it as well. As SC moves forward, every defense is going to say, hey, we're doubling Drake. Yet Graham is still finding ways to get 15 the rock. That's not easy to do. So schematically and the adjustments they would do offensively, I think that's going to give defensive coordinators fits moving forward. But I think we all would agree this is going to be a different animal coming into the Coliseum. Yep. This is not going to be Colorado. This is going to be Utah. Kyle Whittingham does a great job of game planning. We've seen that. He's, he's caused USC fits over the, over the years he's been at, uh, at Utah. I think it's seven years now. And um, um, it, it, this is going to be, I mean, this is going to be the, 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 the biggest challenge of the year. As far as I see, yeah, I mean, it, well, and and that's sort of what I what I'm getting at a little bit because I do, you know, there were obviously a lot of positives that we saw, but some of them were Colorado's futility, and and it's interesting because Utah profiles kind of similarly to Colorado in that Utah is the 11th best passing offense in the Pac-12. Colorado was the 12th. However, there was still a major gulf between 12. And 11. It is Utah's struggle, but they are really good at running the football. And, you know, we saw an improved run defense from USC. I think I need to see it again before I'm convinced that they're going to be able to really stop the run, Sean. Yeah, and this is a real test, I think. We yeah. saw the Colorado offense. I mean, you really could just load it up. Yep. Utah has a, a, a quarterback that can throw it around and mo- make you move a little bit more than Colorado. So I think that's a bigger test. And it's going to be a physical. It's a much more physical bunch than, than Colorado was going to be. I think offensively, it's going to be interesting what Kyle Whittingham does. You know, he, he's been stubborn before and decided, hey, I'm just going to go uh, cover these guys up. We're going to go man-to-man and good luck. Yeah, you mentioned the game two years ago. Yeah, and I it, mean, Michael Pittman went crazy. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's his stubbornness that really hurt him. Is he going to be that stubborn this time, or is he going to try to chance himself up? Defensively, I'm, I'm right with you guys. But offensively, Colorado's defense is they're, they're not bad. They're, they're solid. They did some good things. They, they, Arizona State scored some points, but they needed two trick plays to do it. They held Texas A&M. I know they're on a, a backup quarterback, but into 10 points late in the game. That's a Colorado defense that's uh, maybe a little gassed at this point in the season, having to uh, wear so much of the load for their team. But to put up that amount of points against Colorado is no, uh, no walk in the park. Yeah, it's funny, Max, you say that. I was looking at stats earlier, and it, maybe it just surprised me just because of the conversa- so many conversations we've had. USC's right there in total offense in this league. I think they're, you know, they're second and just a few yards behind Arizona State. The issue for USC, really, when you look at it, is they kick too many field goals. They have three more made field goals than anybody in the conference. You know, they've they make all their field goals, so every time they get to the red zone, they've scored. But they're leaving four points out there, and so they're second in offense, but I think they're fifth or sixth in scoring. And that little golf is the difference. It's funny you call that out. Yeah, they're literally number one in the country in red zone efficiency. Yeah. Well, they score every single time, but yeah. to your point. 
Seven's more important than three. Yep. And, and it just hasn't looked good in the red zone at times. You know, I think you don't see that identity. People have identities down the red zone, and some of that stuff that they do on the open side of the field going up to receivers just doesn't work in that red zone. One more segment of Trojans Live to come. You're listening to Trojans Live on the USC Trojans Media Network. One final segment of Trojans Live on this uh, kind of rainy, thunderous, lightning Monday here. Getting you set USC, Utah, Saturday night at the Coliseum. A 5 o'clock start will go on at 3 o'clock. And it's that's, you know, become a really, uh, I'm not going to say a rivalry per se, but some really good USC-Utah games over the last decade and expecting another one on Saturday, and it'll be interesting for Keaton Slovis, Max, because the last time he played against them, he got hammered on the first series, if I recall correctly, and then Matt Fink came in and, and rescued the game and had his great moment, but the thing that stood out the most to me from Keaton's performance on Saturday was, I can't remember watching him play where he never got touched for a whole game. I mean, he was really comfortable in that pocket on Saturday, and what did you see? Not a single ball thrown into traffic. There wasn't anything close to an interception. Obviously, zero sack and a nice running game. It was a, a comfortable day, but it might be a little bit harder on Saturday as Utah's second in the league in sacks. Yeah, without a doubt. Definitely will be harder uh, this Saturday. And yeah, I was impressed with Keenan. Have been for the past couple of weeks. We, I asked Dante about that, his response ever since, you know, Jackson Dart is everyone's favorite guy on, on, on campus now. That And he, I feel like Keenan came out with an edge and he's been sharp and I'll even rewind it even further. I mean, our conversations last year were about, hey, what's going on with Keenan? Why is the ball coming out of hand, his hands funky? Like, what's going on there? You haven't seen that this year. And the, the offense hasn't been sharp as a whole week in and week out, but I've been impressed with Keenan's performance. I mean, when the, when the routes are there, he's executed them. He's one of the best downfield passers in the country right now that's showing up in Drake Jackson or Drake London's uh, stat sheet. But schematically, it'll be interesting versus Utah. They have one of the best backers in the country. I can already see it. Whittingham's going to do four down linemen, pin their ears back, have one linebacker in the middle, have Lloyd run sideline to sideline and play uh, man coverage or zone coverage with extra DBs out there and, and make, it, uh, make it tough on Keaton Slovis. And one of the in interesting things about Utah's defense is that they're either one of the best, if not the best, team in terms of negative plays. They create a lot of negative plays, tackles for loss, sacks. They're very aggressive. As you mentioned, pin their ears back. They come after you on defense. They make you make quick decisions. And if you don't, it's the negative plays that really show up. If the Trojans have a lot of negative plays on Saturday, it's going to lead to a long game. One thing I like that we saw a little bit on Saturday is some other guy. Dante's living up to you know, practice is, is determining reps a little bit. We've got to see Darwin Barlow a little bit. We're ch starting to see some change in the rotations. Michael Trigg is getting out there more and more. They're going to need all these guys to as the schedule gets harder. They, they just can't have Drake London and Drake Jackson win every game for them. Well, that's what you saw going into the season. You saw how you had this build up, this ramp up to maybe the better competition in uh, in this part of the schedule. So that's what you wanted to see, these guys are mixing in, kind of getting ready for this uh, second half push. And I think you've seen it now a little bit under Dante, and it, you, you hope to see it some more as, as they move along. But I think the bye week is always huge for those kind of guys to take the next step in their game. They get coached up that whole week. It's always a big week of preparation for young guys who haven't played, and that's where they can kind of leave their market and get ready for that big game. And we've talked about the Utah defense line. This is an opportunity for the SC defense line, Cam Rise, Utah's quarterback he's a guy still trying to find his way I mean they lost Brewer early on to you know getting benched in the transfer portal and rising I mean he has his uh, deficiencies as well it's an opportunity if you create pressure on him this is a secondary that can make some plays and create some turnovers yeah JJ you were talking about the importance of momentum going into a bye week with Notre Dame on the other end boy a win and a loss is going to feel a whole lot different when we're sitting here talking a week from now yeah it's going to be really good or really bad yeah and you have to think about it you have to think about it for a while and they're going to need a lot of confidence listen if they're going to go into South Bend and beat Notre Dame they're going to need confidence they're going to need belief in each other they're going to need belief in their head coach and uh, you know I think that'll that'll really be built if they can get it done on Saturday and it, it could be shaken if not so we will talk about it of course next week Trojans Live is a production of USC Sports Properties and Playfly Sports our executive producer is Drew DeHart our producer is Rick Cutler and our engineer today is Ben Conroy production assistance by Katie Ryan and Art Webb thank you for watching our show of course you can always uh, watch it live here on Twitter and you can catch the archive on on YouTube, and you can always listen on 790 KBC, the USC Trojan Media Network. For Sean Cody, for Max Brown, for John Jackson, I am Jordan Moore. We, we will see you on Saturday. It is a 5 o'clock kick, and then uh, we will go on at 3 o'clock. Carson Palmer will be on set with us live. Until then, fight on, everybody.